Dinkabuya has put up quite the pyramid there with his <laughs> opening five. I love players when they just make a little something to do while you're waiting for us casters to get our act together. <laughs> And also, it's not only to accomplish players, but it's also Dinkabui being on Runic for Hire, a deck that nobody even saw getting all the way here into top four. So that is so strong. He does have a history of bringing these, oh, yeah. you know, rogue, unknown Absolutely. strategies all the way deep into the top card of a YCS. And you might be wondering, what does Fossil Dig do in a sprite deck? And there you have your answer. Rex, Fright for Hire, indeed, is a dinosaur, which you can search out with it. Yeah, so when that's normal or special summon, you can search one for higher spell or trap from your deck. And I think from looking at his list, he's only running the one. Yeah, that should yeah. be Rookie for, for Did you Did you realize that this is a little Fluffle crossover? Because this is also almost a Frightful card. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it is almost. So Dinkabui grabbing a card from his deck. And I think the important part about his deck is that he needs to combine both of his engines to really be super powerful. So he needs to draw into his runic cards while also having access to his for hire cards. So there is the activation of Rookie for Hire tributing the wow. Rex and that gets Magic oh. Bash plus a choice break, but oh. there is the Gamma answering that. That is absolutely perfect scenario. For wow. We have said it earlier, if you resolve Gamma on your own turn and, and you just have the driver and the Gamma on the field, then it is going to be hard for your opponent to come back. But we have also seen Omega being summoned in this tournament already. Basti, can you enlighten us? <laughs> there is no Omega <laughs> in the extra deck Omega. of Dinkabui. But, I mean, his link deck materials. is a link deck, yeah, yeah so you can more very than happy easily with this. use that. And we also got that beat onto the field. But still, do we have access to our Runic engine? Because honestly, that is quite a crucial part of that deck. So perhaps we'll see Donna, which is oh, a card yeah. we've seen in a lot of other decks. But this is Donna in its home deck, oh, yeah. if you like. And it, it, it's so much more powerful. So that will allow you to tribute it and summon two for higher monsters from your graveyard. Which he's doing right there. And they should trigger the effect of beat, which will allow him to search any for higher monster from his deck to his hand. This is snowballing quickly. He's getting the advantage of the for high end. And there is the boss monster. That is the card that really enables you for some crazy drawing action or even pot of duality action somewhat. Yeah, both yeah. a draw Rafal, and, champion of for and a gate on your opponent's turn. Yes. Yeah, if you discard a for higher card, so you need yep. quite a bit more resources, but that's what his first effect is. Therefore, summon Rafale, the champion for higher, and then just go to duality action. Yeah, that is and so crazy. When I read that card first, or rather when I played versus Dinkabui and he explained me the card, <laughs> I was like, you can just add whatever card? Is it not just yeah. a for higher card? And he's like, no, I can actually just grab whatever I like. And then we are seeing a small engine that Dinkabui is running as well. He just added Sprite Sprint. I think he is running the one-offs of the Sprite. He's running one blue, one jet, one carrot. It is three blue, but all oh, the okay. others are only ones, yeah. That makes sense. Blue is clearly the most powerful. For sure yeah. it is. But still, I think usually you want to use Rafale to get into your Runic engine yeah. because we still have not seen any Runic cards there from Dinkabui. And the Runic cards are what are your main interruptions on the opponent's turn. And when you have Runic Fountain face up, but there is the Runic oh, wow. tip indeed. So he has all of the engines of his deck combined now. And he will also be able to now... Okay, we use it to special summon. So you can see quite the big going second engine here. Evenly matched, discarded, Gamma resolved on the first turn. There is nothing better than this. We are adding the fountain and there's one card left in hand, if I recall correctly, apart from the sprite starter that could be used here. Yeah, if it's another runic card, that would be perfect yeah. for Dinka here because he'd be able to add Oh, I'll draw two off of his fountain. Yeah, but it's not even super necessary because there is the Rafale, which is going to be able to draw into more cards, or rather, Folgo, which is uh, going to be the result of this Link Summon, maybe even right here. And so you can even draw into cards on the opponent's turn. And indeed, it is Folgo Justice for Hire. So you don't necessarily need the Runic cards right on the spot because you might as well draw into them on the opponent's turn. So Tom not being super familiar with this card, which is fair enough. I don't think we've seen it very much. It's going to allow... Dinka, first of all, to special summon a for higher monster that is different from any of the attributes, or perhaps types, I think, types that were used to special summon Folgo. And it also can't it be used type as a link indeed, material. Yeah. So we are special summoning our Donpa, the marksman for hire. So Donpa, I think, will let you, uh, when another for hire monster is special summoned, destroy a spell or trap from your opponent, which will in turn, hopefully, uh, trigger the Folgo, which says if you control enough for hire monsters, 
Uh, you, I think by default you draw one card, and if you control multiple for higher monsters, I think it's three, then you can draw three cards instead, which wow, is absolutely insane. we're not absolutely even done insane. yet. Gigantic yes. Sprite hitting the field. We want to see the blue, and we want to special summon out the Sprite carrot. This is also an engine that I love to play in the tier limit strategy back then, going for Gigantic Sprite at some point with some random level twos, and then just <laughs> go for, for the full Sprite combo involving Smashers as well. Does he run Smashers or just the starter as the spell card? Um, I don't see smashers in here. No, there's no a very, a very oh, red. full deck <laughs> from Dinka, we can agree, right? Yeah, but He's got red. a bunch of, you know, for hire, a bunch of runic and a bunch of yeah. sprite cards. But it's so fitting that some of those for hire cards are actually level 2, right? There's Rex being level 2, Donpa is also level yeah. 2, so that just works perfectly well together with these sprite cards. So Tom's going to have to pay attention if he's not played against this for hire deck how Dinka's going to destroy a card he controls, and you have to pay attention to the effect of that Rex in the graveyard, which can banish itself to Special Summoner for higher monster at any point during somebody's main phase. Yep, that is something he definitely has to pay attention to, because those graveyard effects, especially when that Rex is somewhere in the middle of exactly. the graveyard, you could really easily forget about it, but that's something at this top level of competition probably is not going to happen to those players. And, and we are also going to see Sprite, Red and Carrot on the field, so all of the Sprite cards that you want to have on your end field are just right there. Also, Rex is really good at not only summoning monsters, it also just adds back the spell cards that you're using in your combos. Yeah, oh, that can is add so it from strong. your graveyard as well? Yes. It, you special so summon good. it if it is a monster. Oh, wow. That's really cool. I mean, this honestly right now looks like a sprite end board, but just with the potential of drawing so many cards yeah. as well on your opponent's turn, so you have insane follow-up with that as well. That is just really, really, really good. And also, we saw so many evenly matched over the course of the weekend, and this board is evenly proved that with that sprite carrot right there. So on Tom's side, what, what cards are we seeing in his deck that might potentially let him answer this field? So evenly matched would have been one of those. Book of Eclipse in combination with that evenly matched could be something as well. Yeah. I can see that happening. But besides that, nothing really. I mean, maybe Triple Tactics Thrust into Triple Tactics Talents. That's always a way. So interestingly, Dinka, most of the time if you used uh, a book or something to target the carrot, you would just let that through. There's no point sure. tributing a monster, but Dinka might want to remove a monster yes. from his own field in order to give him space to summon a for higher monster from his graveyard and then trigger the effect of Dompa. You could also Certainly. maybe chain the IP in as a oh, response yes. to that. But oh, oh, but it looks like pass. Tom just passes, and I definitely think that is a smart play because Dinka Bui is not going to have a battle phase here in this turn. Yeah. So why do you want to try? You can just try next turn with even more cards in your hand, especially, yeah, like one more card in your <laughs> hand in that particular scenario, but uh, Dinka Bui's field is full, so probably not going to see a lot more development here. And that's as I'm saying that, he's going for an Exceed Salmon. But that's a really interesting. It seems to have thrown Dinker a bit. I mean, not that he, he looks like it, but he did pause, at least with his hands. And yeah. with his face. He looked a yeah. little bit confused, like, what else do I do? Like, this is my board. You were supposed to try wow. and answer it. And that is just nasty at this point. You can just go for the uh, Mannequin Cat, the number 29, I think, and yep. just special summon the Ash Blossom, if you still had Sprite Red in your deck. Yeah. Oh, does it also summon from the graveyard? Well, it doesn't matter. I think maybe he just he doesn't care about summoning a monster from his deck. He cares about giving a monster yeah. to Tom, because the potential answers to Dinka's field are things like evenly matched, things like Lightning Storm, or just summoning a Cash Tira. But none yeah. of those you can do if you have oh, an annoying Ash Blossom stuck exactly on your own field. Sure. And you actually can summon from the graveyard, so you detach the red, and then you can special summon the red back when the Ash Blossom is on the field. Oh, I think you're just double-checking that as well. Yeah. Very much looks like that because he deliberately detached the red there. That is about to happen. <laughs> Tom was ready to give it over to his opponent, but no, Dinka Bui special summons it to the side of Tom and he gets himself a Sprite Red as well. And in fact, so Volgo can draw cards when you destroy one of your opponent's yeah. cards, but Tom didn't give any cards to destroy. But now Dinka says, all right, I'll give you one. <laughs> and then I can destroy it. There comes Rafal again, and oh yeah, we are destroying the Ash Blossom and Joy Spring with the Donpa, showing us that Donpa can not only destroy spell and trap cards, but also just any card on the field. Yeah, a really dominant position for Dinka here. He's going to be able to draw three cards off Fogo here. And that's going to wow. give him a lot of Fogo up. <laughs> that is indeed the case. I, I actually like that one, Leo. I got to give <laughs> Thank that. Thank you.
to you, that was a really good pun. And again, once you draw cards with runics, you just draw even more. The drawing yeah. never stops. So back over to Tom. So this turn, as there were no runic spell cards being activated in the last turn, he has to do something because there will not be another turn of Dinkabri not having a battle phase. Exactly. And this is just the point when you're playing against a really unknown deck like the Fahaya strategy together with the Runic. I mean, you know what the Runic cards do. This is why you're also afraid. You know what the Sprites card Ooh. do. Oh, and we are seeing Ooh. evenly matched. And I think That's this good. might as well just be the case. You might have two. Evenly matched number one, possibly. <laughs> yeah, evenly matched number one. This will evenly be matched by Karen. Part one. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I think Abui is considering what to do here, but obviously you're going to negate Bever Sprite Carrot, yeah. And we are even tributing the IP Mascarina, and now we're going to see if the... Oh yeah, oh, we're de wow. destroying oh, and drawing. Course. Let's draw oh, three. Just checking. But Ash Blossom. Ash Blossom oh. on the Volgo. This, I, th I think you can consider red. I True. would consider red, yeah, drawing three. Especially if you think, like, what, what, yeah. what use is red if your board's going to be destroyed? Oh wow, he did not use red and he did not have another evenly, so that was actually the right decision for Dinka. Just keeping the red negation. There comes the race off, and Ka is once again considering whether to react to that. This is the, this is what I was trying to say earlier before something crazy happened again. <laughs> <laughs> this is the point when you're playing against rogue strategies, you don't know what's expecting you. I agree. That is the Dinka Bui bonus because he always yeah. brings those rogue strategies into the tournament. Their opponents, uh, his opponents, never know what to do. I can only recommend you play locals in Berlin because you will play versus this guy trying out his weird strategies, I can tell you from my personal experience. And I feel like the Kashira monsters all get a lot weaker when you've already used your battle phase for evenly yeah, matched. True. Because you can't, if your opponent's got an effect negation, normally you just sit on the effect negation until your opponent uses an effect. But Kashira monsters are very threatening, they can just attack over any effect negation that you have. But if you've already used your battle phase to evenly match now, all of these effect negations, you simply have to force out using your Kashtira monsters, which you don't necessarily want to do. Yeah. So now Tom trying his best, trying to come up with something here using the effect of Rysart. And it works. <laughs> yeah, it does hit the field here. And Tom also wants to use the effect now. Of course, the card from the deck is being banished as cost, and it is going to be the Nightmare Unicorn and Dinkabui quickly picks up his deck and also banishes three cards face down. Now that smells like Kashtira Birth to me in hand of Tom. Uh, Otherwise, yeah. I don't see a reason why you would banish the Kashtira Unicorn. And Birth is actually a really good card against Runic. Yeah, but Dinkabui really fought for a while when Tom oh. activated the Race Off. So I would be thinking that Dinkabui very likely has Runic Destruction. Oh, he added it. Oh, he even has... <laughs> oh, yeah, then of course he has Runic Destruction. I saw a Flashing Fire. Maybe maybe I saw that wrong. Uh, maybe I... Yeah. I think I, I... I also think it was a Flashing Fire, Honestly, to be could, could have been both. They do look <clears> quite <throat> similar. He could have... I mean, he, he's drawn so many cards by now, he could have anything. Ooh, look, there's the Summon of the Dark Arm, but now we use the effect of Rex, and Donpa is going to be able to destroy wow. the Dark Arm, and that means Din Kabui is going to take game number one here. Wow. Absolutely phenomenal, this runic first turn, this runic for higher first turn was crazy. There were so many monsters, so many unique interactions that I haven't seen before in my life. Yeah, Dinkabui finishing second place in YCS Utrecht, but he's back for revenge. Here in top four, already being up one game in this, he wants to get back into the finals and this time be a champion again for the second time in his career. Uh, that was just such a great display, we got to see the full combo on and I guess, what, what was his opponent supposed to do? I mean, he tried with an Ash Blossom, but he that tried. was met oh, with yeah. a pretty good answer there. I really like the idea of uh, skipping your turn, because if your opponent doesn't have a battle yeah. phase, and uh, maybe he didn't see what the punish was, and I mean, for us, like, oh, we didn't see what was going on. We thought, wow, that's really cool, but then Dinka just showing off again, you know, I can put a monster on your field, and then I can trigger my Fogo to draw three cards, and. Yeah, I, you know, you drew one, I drew three extra, come at me, you know? Just yeah. another display of power. I was thinking he was using the Mannequin Cat to summon the Ash Blossom to the opposing field to let it stick there, but yeah. no, he had a different idea. He just <laughs> wanted to draw three cards! <laughs> that also worked out pretty well. And I mean, yeah, that's a pretty good approach by Tom, because Tom obviously knows how to pilot against runic strategi strategies, because runic strategies in general 
are really popular at this event. But that yeah. specific version, that runic for hire version, obviously is not so well known. And therefore, he knows how to work against the runic engine, but the for hire engine, not so much. Mm. I mean, it wasn't a for hire card, it was a mannequin cat, which I think some players are playing, some others are not. And that was a really creative use of it. I yeah. really like the idea of you know just giving your opponent a card so you could destroy one of the. It's, it's like, yeah, that's not really. Sp what, yeah, 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 for sure. Amazing. But, but like the the sequence of him just passing the turn versus a runic deck just yeah. seems very very good. To, I, I really like that. To be honest, with those engines, I wouldn't even have expected for him for Dinka Bui to fit another mannequin cut in there. I like, guess <laughs> this is so the least cards, card yeah. I would have expected. <laughs> but I mean, it just makes sense if you need something to destroy, that you use the Mannequin Cat to special summon something to the opposing side. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think this scenario has come up more often this tournament than you would think. Yeah, and I think the, I would agree. the general utility of giving your opponent a monster, funnily enough, is just good, just really to give your opponent. Now, yeah. Imagine Certainly a format is. where it's just, I'll give you a monster. <laughs> Deal oh, with no. It. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, really. I mean, there but. are some nasty monsters in the format, like Ibli, the oh. Corrupter, or... We don't want that. Ras Disciple. <laughs> But or that, Dark Angel that we have seen. This was just an Ash. <laughs> the gimmick yeah, puppet as well, for sure. Mm. Oh, yeah, gimmick puppet. You're absolutely right. But we have seen that the players are ready for a game two. I think that Tom might be starting, but let's see. Let's go over to the table. Honestly, uh, I watched a little bit of Tom's game. I think it was in top 64 when he was sitting there in top cut. And he was uh, going second in a couple of matchups, for example, in the mirror match. But I think letting Dinka Bui start here with his runic for higher deck is not really the greatest option. Very brave to let your opponent start when you don't really know yeah, what their strategy is. Indeed. So he did decide to go first here, starting it off with the card that would enable your entire combo immediately with the Kashira Unicorn. I mean, we have figured out over the weekend that Kashira, after siding, even is incredible at mm -hmm. going second. However, yeah. Those dimension Too many shifters, I think. Oh, yeah. Dimension are, shifter are would also be, be absolutely massive deck deck. against this deck. Yeah, absolutely. One thing yeah. I'm noticing in Tom's deck that I think is really cool is running that cross out designator. So yeah. he's running a variety of popular hand traps or interruption Ooh, effects. Ooh, and we are oh, chaining wow. the dimension shifters. So that is quite a good start for Tom Kleinegraber, as those runic cards in the next turn are not going to hit the graveyard. All the for higher cards. I think you want the for higher cards into the yeah. graveyard as so well. Rex, because yeah. Donna, Both of Rex. It. So yeah, this hits that. two of the engines massively. Still the sprite cards left, though. Mm. Only thing that is sad, but I mean, you can, it, it's fine, is that the Theosis gets banished immediately without a target in the banish pile, so you can't use it from the graveyard to summon out Scareclaw Kashtira. But I mean, at this point, if you have Shift Directive, fine. Honestly, I think <laughs> I, like, I like it even more in the banish pile, because you are yeah, going true. to end on a Ryzard, so a Ryzard can just easily attach the card from the banish pile, and therefore uh, you could then use the Kashtira Theosis again. So uh, it will be more likely to actually use the on-field effect of a Ryzard compared to just that uh, scared for Kashtira somehow. Fair. What we're saying, Kashtira, they can banish it from anywhere. Yeah, You indeed. can even banish it from the banished zone. <laughs> I don't know how that would work, but sure, if you like. Well, you banish it by uh, attaching it and then banishing it again. Bring it back for a little bit. Tom, it's your reality. It's your world and we're just all living in it. So. <laughs> and we're playing a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! We are playing that. That, that, make, that checks out. <laughs> That makes this reality so beautiful. So, we are searching for Ryzard here via the effect of Kashira Fenrir. So, do we think Tom's going to play this sort of a... We've seen players go for the more conservative, just play three monsters, make a Ryzard, and then pass. Specifically to play under Nibiru. Yeah. Do we think we're going to see that now? I think Tough it's one. a it's a double-edged sword sword versus any runic deck, because yeah. runic has so many cards that can out that one Ryzard, because Runic Freezing Curses, Runic Flashing Fire, really both of them are really strong against that. So we see that Tom decides yeah. to not do that <laughs> Tom and answers rather for us, exactly. goes for Shangri Era. <laughs> we can now banish the Big Bang from the deck with Ryzard to spend it. We can also go Ooh. for the Ogre. 
hopefully Tom has a birth to follow this up. I mean, it is kind of a tell here. Right? Maybe he just decided, I don't want this card in my deck. <laughs> go away. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure we're going to go for the Ogre as well. Because now, at this point, we already have committed into the Nibiru. So we might as well just get another card that is helping us with the Kashira Ogre. And getting the Kashira Birth onto our field will also be really, really strong. Because as we know, Kashira Birth, a powerhouse yeah. of a spell card versus the spell card deck, the Runic deck. Good old Kashtira Geburt on the field here, the German name, but uh, for the moment Dimension Shifter is active, so this is going to be relevant in two turns. Yeah, but still, I mean, those games can yeah. take quite a while against runic strategies. And as now we, oh, yeah. we are searching for the Kashtira Big Bang and Stat. So, as I was suggesting earlier, the, the Crossout Designator, I think, is an indicator that Tom wants to play very aggressively and flood his board with Kashtira monsters, because Crossout Designator is pretty much the only way I can think of that Kashtira can play around a Nibiru. Yeah, true. So um, I think his deck in general is uh, pretty well designed to play the Mirror Match, to be honest, because of course Crossout Designator by design <laughs> is a good card in the Mirror Match, because you will be able to also negate like Theosis, Unicorn, and all that kind of stuff, like the engine cards as well, because both of you are playing them. And it's, it's almost like a negate anything, because you can include in your deck all of these common tech cards people yeah. are playing, Book of Moon, Infinite Impermanence, and so on, and you can negate any of those. Certainly, yes. So, Tom takes a little bit of time here, decides to go... Ooh, do we go for Mind Hacker here? I believe... I think that, that looks like where this is going. Or another Shangri era. Yep, Mind it is Hacker indeed Diabolus' The Mind Hacker. And I really like that because, uh, okay, I'm not going to do the fall go up joke again, but I think you can actually, first of all, get a grip on the extra deck of Dinka Bui. You really want to know what else he's <laughs> playing because that mannequin cat was a f surprise for sure. You have no idea about the cards that are going to be summoned later on, maybe. Okay, we're now taking away the zone blocker as well, but I think that Diablos is going to do a good job here at giving Tom necessary information. Yeah, I think it's really useful. I mean, he did see an awful lot of it in the last game because Dinka basically summoned it all. But yeah, what do, what do you? Well, I suppose we might not even get to see what's banished if Tom does the banishing face down four. Good yeah. point. But oh. yeah, but still, absolutely, uh, I think a pretty good thing to just still look at the extra key and maybe learn a little bit, maybe read up on all the cards <laughs> that are in there. Yeah, exactly. Take a little bit of time. I, I really like that what you brought up there, Leo, because this matchup certainly is not super familiar to him. Probably Quick. not at all. <laughs> Look, Quick we can session. see it. There is the gigantic sprite, and when there's only one gigantic sprite in the extra deck, that looks like a pretty good hit there immediately. And the, the deck of Dinka, because he's running so many different engines, it might be quite tight and increases the possibility that if you banish, how many cards does he banish now? Five from Dinka's deck? It might start to become quite annoying if yeah. you hit any of the important cards. We can see maybe one beat, one domper in the main deck. So, Or maybe even two Runic Fountains. That oh, would, that also would be, be quite insane, crucial. Yeah. Yeah. Runic Fountain would be a hard hit. However, you would have to hit two of those. I mean, uh, manageable. Yeah. yeah, you can do that. For sure, for sure. There are only 40 cards in his deck, and you already took eight of them out right there. Well, three of, uh, one was from the extra deck. But that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah, so it's seven. Choose yeah, your counting was a lot better than mine. I said five. So I don't know why I said five. <laughs> I was like, some of them are from the extra deck, but no, only one is from the extra deck. So we are also setting the Kashtira Big Bang, and that is usually not what we're going to yeah. do with that, because usually this is part of the big combo. We're going to banish it to special summon one of the materials of Kashtira Shangri Ura back to the field. But honestly, the on field effect versus this particular deck seems quite good, because we saw yeah. that Dinkabui is floating the field with multiple monsters and all those for higher monsters are adding up to each other they are summoning right next to each other and then just a Kashtira big birth timed very well at some point might just end the entire turn so we're adding a Rex for higher fright for higher to the hand and also I've just realized that this is the second time if Dinkabui wins that he enters a YCS final with a runic strategy indeed yeah in Utrecht he also played Runic Sprite, but now he just found those yeah. nice little for higher cards as well, which is a pretty good addition <laughs> to the deck. Uh, this is... This uh, Arise Heart is getting very large. Ooh, there comes Runic Destruction. Just going after one of those cards in the back row of Tom there. Interesting. If he hits Big Bang, it will trigger in the bench. No, Ooh. Crossout Designator is activated. Interesting. What and card would you go for here? Uh -huh. Entertainingly enough, uh, and, and maybe he's kept the evenly matched specifically for Crossout Designator. I don't think Dinka would activate a Runic Destruction in his main phase one <laughs> if he had Unlikely. evenly matched, but 
even mesh isn't going to be much use in your deck, so maybe you just banish it anyway. I, I think. Uh, do we have access to all of our Kashira monsters yet? Because we could just banish a Kashira monster that we then. Oh, but we do go for the evenly matched, just in case. Just in case. But I still like it because you don't want to top deck into your exactly, own evenly yeah. matched next turn, so it's actually a good thing. So are we banishing anything useful? Another cross out designator, Ash Blossom and Raid Soth. That is not too bad. There is uh, nothing that you are missing now, however, it also doesn't give you some resources. Yeah, true. Well, one Kashira monster would have been nice. Let's be honest. So yeah, a lot of them are already under the Arise Heart, so you're not, you're not too sad. But I agree. It is one of the real big downsides of the Runic cards. <laughs> now, Tom, rearranging the materials <laughs> of the, of the Arise.